My name is Doug Ferber from Tyline. I'm here with uh, our tech sales expert, uh, Codec Whisperer, Jacob Daniluk, and Matt Williams from Grand Island GI Family Radio. Thank you. All Thanks right. for having Thanks, me. Thanks, Doug. You bet. So uh, we're here to talk about Codex and, and how they do it in small markets today. So Matt, let's start with you. Just tell us a little bit about you and your company. Uh, you describe yourself as a jack of all trades for, for radio and it's probably true of small places like Grand Island where you have to wear many hats. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, exactly. Um, we're probably, uh, Grand Island's about 60,000 people uh, to 20 miles to the uh, south. Uh, we have probably about 25,000, um, a small college town, and then to about 30 miles to the west, we have another small college town. They're probably about closer to uh, that 25 to 30,000 range as well. So we call ourselves the Tri-Cities. So we cover quite a bit of ground. We're probably the, we're, we are the third largest area in Nebraska outside of Omaha and um, um, Lincoln. We actually have uh, nine frequencies in this building uh, that serve the Tri-Cities area here in the middle of Nebraska. We also have two other stations um, in this building. So we have 11 total. Uh, those two stations are out in the western portion of uh, the state of Nebraska, North Platte. We actually send the audio to that area. And then we have three stations in McCook, uh, uh, which is the southwest portion of the state of Nebraska down towards the Nebraska-Kansas border. So those are the stations that uh, we have. Um, in the state of Nebraska. Um, we've worked with um, a different kind of codec in the past, um, but we decided to go a little bit of a different direction about three years ago. And what, what was the reason for that? One of the bigger reasons was um, we recently had flipped an uh, FM to uh, HD, uh, one of our bigger uh, country stations uh, to HD, and that gave us the subchannels. Um, when things really started to change, when it started to uh, let the, the translators go, that really played a, a big part uh, in what we were doing. We were able to get some of those small, smaller translators. Um, we were able to apply HD to those uh, translators and then uh, create different formats. And so that's what really changed. And of course, like many um, markets, um, you know, our size and, and smaller sports is a huge, huge thing here. Um, especially Friday night football games. And we were tired of basically rigging stuff up. Um, we were tired of, of using things like nothing against Skype, but we were just tired of doing that. We were having problems. Um, you know, we would have kids back here at the station and, and nothing against them, but things would go wrong and we have to try to fix things. We were tired of doing that. We wanted to make sure that our people could tune into the radio and turn on the ball game, especially for a Friday night football game. We cover five games every Friday night, the same five schools, three here in town, two of our surrounding towns. Uh, we wanted something, we were looking and looking and looking, and we wanted something that was going to fulfill that need where we could connect five different things. So three years ago, we went to Vegas. Um, we don't go every year to NAB, but we went. Um, we wanted to get in front of people like Jake and Doug and we wanted to get and we wanted to ask questions you know and and get to touch a Merlin plus or look at the via um, you know or the commander at the time and, and things like that with Tyline and we wanted to see what our options um, were to try to make our quality of audio especially for a Friday night football game better so well, I, I, go ahead I'm sorry Jake oh no let, uh, let me roll. no okay. I don't want to I don't want to step on you go ahead well, I was going to ask, um, as you were at NAB, what were one of the things or some of the things that you saw about Tyline that you really liked versus some of the other competition that, of ours that you saw maybe out at NAB? Merlin Plus, Merlin Plus, Merlin Plus. I mean, that's what sold <laughs> us. I mean, let's face it. Some of them others, you have one rack mount and you connect to that and that's it. And so you have, you know, for, in our case, it's one, two, three, four, five, and it's like, Oh my gosh, seriously, that sounds a, a little space. much. Keep in mind, we have our North Platte stations in this building as well. So wouldn't it be kind of cool if we could have six connections and we have one reserved for the North Platte stations so they could use it for ball games, severe weather, breaking news, a press conference, something like that. Hey, that's dedicated to them. 
if they were to need to jump in and connect to one of our dedicated Grand Island connections, that's fine. We could do that as long as there's no conflictions or anything like that. Okay, so we could do that and we can have five connections dedicated for Grand Island. It sold us. You have six connections in that box and it was just a no brainer. It was, you know, the light bulb went off. You almost wanted to hug the tie line rep of those guys from Australia. Pardon me for not remembering names, but you were just like, this is great. And then you had watched some YouTube videos before we went to Vegas, but it was just a no brainer because nobody at that time and still to really this day can really touch that. And so we had gone forward. We were sold. We wanted to get a Merlin Plus. Uh, we decided that we had enough budget to get two via Codex as well, the new um, broadcast boxes that had come out. So we went forward with that. And then we got the, the licenses um, to use on like our phones or an iPad in sort. Tell me about how many translators you actually have and, and, uh, and kind of the setup. Because that, that's, a, that's a very common thing because those, those translators don't cover much, but they can cover a, a whole market uh, if you, you know, they're located in the right places. So tell, tell me a little, tell us a little bit more about kind of, GI family and kind of how you're set up for just yeah, one from of, a regular station standpoint. Yeah, one of the first ones uh, we actually put on was you can see the logo right there. It's the AM station, and that's the most popular thing that you could do. Um, you know, our AM at night goes to little to nothing. You're sitting at a stoplight and you can't even hear the thing. Um, so we applied 105.5 uh, to our AM, um, and that was huge because not only were we um, improving our quality of broadcast with Tyline. Uh, but we improved our quality of broadcast on the FM side. So, um, you know, we don't want AM radio to go away. I don't want AM radio, radio to go away, but I can't tell you the last time I listened to our, our own station on AM because of that FM translator. And that's the best thing the FCC could have possibly ever done is to let some of those go. And especially in our immediate area, I mean, you know, we serve Carney and Grand Island since they're so close, or Carney and Hastings since they're so close, but this is home to us. Grand Island is home, 60,000 people. So to improve the quality of broadcast there um, was a big plus. Um, then we got a hold of 99.7. We had actually, uh, our active rock station a long time ago, um, we took it away. Advertising wasn't the best uh, for active rock. Lots of listeners. Advertising wasn't the greatest. We flipped it to a top 40 station. We wanted to bring active rock back, uh, especially just for working men and women who love that format. So we brought it in slowly. So we flipped HD2 and we started just specifically on HD2, an active rock station. We got a hold of 99.7, applied that to HD2. We got a rock station. So we're good, good to go there. Uh, took it another step forward, had 93.3, same thing, applied it to HD3. Um, our area, especially here in Grand Island, since like we said, this is home, uh, heavy, heavy Hispanic population. Um, that Hispanic population, uh, a lot of that, you know, works at our huge meat packing plant. We have a JBS plant here in Grand Island, which is the largest beef producer in the North American for JBS. So we want to serve that. Um, community and the biggest thing there is um you know is that we've done a really good job of with that spanish station um is relaying the COVID 19 things um to that so um in order for us to do that a lot we've used tie line we've used uh, my ipad at home uh to do governor press conferences in spanish or uh different to uh, our big school here grand island high school uh, one of uh, four high schools we have here in town they did things in spanish I didn't want to sit here till seven o'clock at night. So I would go home and I'd log into my iPad. I have a, a USB three camera adapter for iPad. I plug it in from there. I go to a USB uh, three adapter from Behringer and I literally log in. We use next gen as our automation system. And I literally turn myself on air it, turn it off, go back to music. And so we're really able to um, incorporate onto our Spanish station. And then our last translator, it's really small, not very big. It's about 250 watts. It's actually on the antenna out back here at the radio station. It's a classic country station. So along with active country or new country, and then as well as top 40, we have 
a lot of different formats in this building to to serve the area. How has the pandemic affected your um, uh, your broadcasting? I, 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 do you have a lot of DJs? Um, a and are they working from home? And has the pandemic affected the meatpacking industry in your market? Yes and yes. Um, probably actually March um, 20 something around there. Um, really before the COVID-19, the pandemic had hit this area, um, we had gone ahead and we did layoffs, uh, especially in this building. We had four on-air people. I had a couple sales people, office people, um, and I've lost complete total track of how many weeks it has been since then. Um, right now we have two full-time people, myself and our news guy, who also is a jack of all trades, who does a lot of voice tracking for us. Um, in our other markets, we have people that are voice tracking, and then we have a part-time guy um, who is helping us as much as he possibly can as well. So um, like I mentioned before, you know, the days have been uh, long. Um, we have been lucky enough to just keep it to very minimal staff to where we're able to come in. So it's basically drop the kids off at daycare, come to the radio station, get the kids, come home, and kind of do that triangle every single day. Um, we were at one time the hotbed of Nebraska for COVID-19. So it was, um, the cases were extremely high. We were averaging, you know, one to two, sometimes a couple days in there it was five or eight deaths a day um, it had really affected um, us as a radio station when it comes to the income for sure so it's it's good that we laid off the announcers and the people that we did because there's people in Nebraska that were waiting seven weeks at a time uh, or seven weeks total to try to get their unemployment and again their COVID-19 relief fund um, pay. So it is a good thing we did um, do what we did when we did it, but it also affected uh, guys like me because, you know, I, I love radio, but it turns into some long days when you're doing production, voice tracking this station, that mm -hmm. station, this station, that station, and then doing a governor's press conference and then doing it in Spanish. So to incorporate Tyline, it's really helped because I can go home and catch my breath for a little bit. And then I can do some things live if I need to do them from home. I have a full home setup, a home studio with a next gen machine there. Um, Sundays on our AM station, we do a church broadcast. So I will go from one service to another and broadcast those live through my iPad, through Tyline, connecting to the, the Merlin Plus. And the second part of your question of touch base, um, you know, they never did shut down the JBS facility here in Grand Island. Um, they did all the precautions took care of everything that they possibly could. But as many of us know, the beef prices have gone significantly higher. I uh, don't want to get into that, but you know, it is, it is affected, especially like I mentioned, we are the, the largest uh, beef packing plant in uh, North America with JBS. So it has had its effects, especially financially. Uh, actually June 1st was the first day of phase one here. Uh, the rest of the state of Nebraska has been ahead of us quite a ways. Uh, yesterday was the first time you could go get a haircut. Uh, yesterday was the first time you could actually go into a restaurant. Um, so we are doing as much as possibly can to promote our local businesses, our local restaurants, and uh, trying to not only take step forward to getting back to where we were as a broadcast uh, group, but also getting our businesses back to where they need to be as well. Yeah, I, I have noticed the price of food gone up. I was in Costco last week, and uh, a brisket was five dollars a pound whereas last time it was more like 250 so it was basically double yeah. so yeah. and we we hope that your um your community makes a strong comeback and your your uh, uh radio company is able to hire some of these people back when it's time so yeah fingers crossed um right now kind of what we're sitting on the fence is you know many uh county fairs have have um close their doors, you know, they're just going to basically, those kids are going to show their animals and that's going to be about it. No concerts, obviously. Uh, right now we're on the fence of the Nebraska State Fair, uh, which has uh, been in Grand Island for quite a while. It moved from Lincoln uh, quite a few years ago. And so that is a huge, huge deal here in Grand Island. Hotels, restaurants, everything uh, brings people to uh, Grand Island. So we're fingers crossed. Hopefully we'll be able to implement the State Fair in some form or fashion. Uh, late uh, August into September. And I'm sure 
you're looking forward to, to the uh, football season. Yes. And hopefully that, <laughs> that happens. Uh, it's, it's a common uh, concern in small market radio that uh, and a lot of people in big, big places don't realize how important it is to companies like yours, uh, the, the football season that is. So. Yeah, that's for sure. You know, Jake, didn't well, you have some questions about technology and what uh, um, Matt might be using to do the football games? Well, yeah, and I was about to say, that's kind of a perfect segue there, uh, Doug, uh, about football. Um, Matt, with like all of the tie line equipment, I'm, I'm going to make an assumption here that you're just using like a VIA to connect to your Merlin Plus for football, or are you doing anything more uh, technical, would you say, with like, or specific, unique with like the VIA or report it dialing into the Merlin? Like, how exactly are you guys doing your football games, I guess I should ask? Um, so how we have it set up, um, like you mentioned with the VIA, um, save for a football game. Um, I'll give you another instance here in a little bit, but, um, you know, we're setting up that VIA and we're using basically a Verizon internet hub uh, for internet. And we're just directly connecting into the Merlin Plus. Um, three of the connections, we actually have the capability of talking back uh, to that person. Uh, having a conversation back and forth with them. Um, two of the connection, or the other three, I should say, is when you, you connect automatically um, the station that you're on or you choose to be on, um, we have some finagled wiring in there. But if uh, for a case that, that last connection for our North Platte station, I can actually get into NextGen if I just Google Chrome in, desktop in, and I have a button on there and I can just select it, and I say, oh, I want to be on Rock 100. Okay, so then Rock 100's control room comes to me. So I can hear the commercials, all the audio that's playing on the air outside of the announcer. So whatever is playing in that control room, I can hear it. And then I'm like, I, I'm not on that station. I want to be on the classic country station. Click a button, boom, it flips from rock station to classic country. And I can hear everything coming back to me, all the commercials, the bumpers, everything. But the... So basically, we're just connecting to, to the Merlin uh, directly. Um, and like I said, three of our setups um, are directed to the board. So the board op, where somebody actually physically has to pot up the pot to hear back, microphone, and such like that. So that's basically how we're, how we're connected um, to, to all of our stations. We just directly connect to that. One thing that we do do quite a bit is we do use the, uh, the SD card in the back of the Vias to record okay. on site. I'm big into that um, because, you know, there are hiccups, you know, it, it is with everything. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. Sometimes you do run into a, a trouble where it kind of just a little digital stutter or, or something like that, or you may lose connectivity um, for one or two seconds. So it is nice to have that on site recording. Um, not everybody has, has uh, played with the playback. I have done it a couple times, especially for like an interview or something, a pregame interview. Um, one of the biggest things I think the, the plus is to the VIA is when we go to like state basketball or state volleyball, there's lots of media, there's lots of radio. As you know, you can see in Jake's pictures is, is, is the compact of what the VIA does and, and everything that it does. And you would be amazed if you're not familiar with the VIA, you would be shocked to know what that thing can do. But you're like sitting next to another guy and then another radio announcer to your left and to your right, and you don't have a lot of room at your table. You literally just slap that puppy down, grab an ethernet cable, because they provide that to some of the venues and you can pop that in, connect, bang, you're ready to go. State volleyball, they have a, a screen uh, that divides Pinnacle Bank Arena and Lincoln. So sometimes you have to hop from court to court. Purely unplug, grab it, put your, leave your headset on, go to the next court, sit down, pop it in, and call your next match. It, the compact and the... Portability. The, yeah, the portability. There, there you go. Thank you, Doug. Mm -hmm. is, is amazing because you don't have to, you know, you, it can be made so easy. And if you you know, if you need to, like for football, you know, if we have a sideline guy, you know, you hook up a wireless mic or, or something like that, you know, you can hook more things into it. But the portability and how easy it can be is, is crazy. Are you using Report It? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Through, through the iPads, that's uh, what we use. I actually have it on my phone. 
Um, you know, we were briefly talking about it before we started. Um, in the back of my mind, I didn't think really anything was going to happen uh, here in Grand Island, but Sunday night, we did have some protesting, um, believe it or not, um, in, our, in our town. Um, Lincoln and Omaha have had uh, peaceful and unpeaceful protests. Um, and I didn't really think anything would happen here, but we had probably a gathering of 300. Um, so I was able to grab the laptop, uh, I grabbed a hub, and I literally logged into NextGen. I connected to one of the stations, did a report, went back to this programming, jumped out of that station, connected to another station through Merlin Plus, did a report, all from my phone. Um, if I have to do severe weather and I'm not close to the station, um, as long as I can get on the air, I'll do cases like that all the time. Um, other times I've literally connected um, and done an interview with the coach and we've just recorded it back at the station be a pregame show and then the board op will just dump it in and we're good to go. Um, so, and, you know, if I just didn't want to record it on my phone and email it back, I've done cases like that with, with my phone. But like we said, we have the apps um, on our iPads um, that we use all the time. Hey, Jake, um, why don't you uh, discuss the uh, the idea of uh, using the reporting with VO? Oh, so that in you can... a sideline mode, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, because uh, you could probably v... explain that better than I can. Okay. Uh, well, the VIA recently got an update, uh, just so you know, Matt, that allows the VIA to work with multiple mono streams. Before it could do two, now it has the ability to do up to three. But what we can do with that is how you're using like a Verizon hotspot. Mm -hmm. If we get what's called a public static address on that, similar to what your Merlin Plus already has at the studio, we can actually have report it dial into the VIA remotely, come up on a specific audio stream. We can then mix that audio on the VIA directly and then feed that that whole program audio on the VIA with the report it back to the studio. The idea here is as you're sitting in that press box doing your broadcast, um, you might have a sideline reporter somewhere that uh, might want to interview the coach or a player or maybe even just an audience member right there. And you don't have to do any pre recordings or pre tapes or even deal with wireless mics. Report it becomes your wireless microphone at that point wow. where the via is the hub and then you can take the report wherever you need to at that point and it gets fed back to the studio in one stream yep. so there's no so everything issues. yeah yeah so latency is much lower it's much quicker um you don't you have that see it, but uh, my jaws over here it's it's i dropped and it rolled to the back of the door <laughs> <laughs> that's really cool uh, and you know that's that's something like we were mentioning you know that something that Thailand does nobody else. I don't know any of anybody that can do something like that. And, you know, you mentioned, you know, another case I could think of is um, Sunday night. You know, what if I had, um, what if I had another guy with me and he's down the street, like two blocks mm -hmm, and he's exactly. at the end of the protest, you know, just from a news standpoint, um, you know, I'm going through Jack of all trades. Okay. Let's take it to, um, another step, how about severe weather? I've got somebody in the field, somebody sitting in their car, they're watching this tornado, I'm, and I'm somewhere else. Um, you know, that's, there's so many scenarios that you could use that, and, and don't kid yourself if you're out there going, what, what would I use that for? Um, and there are things on there like, like that, I would need some help setting up, but if I mm -hmm. teach myself, force myself to learn and, and use it, um, it's amazing technology that can take your broadcast to a whole nother level. Oh yeah. You know, and the way, go ahead, Jake. I'm sorry. Well, I was going to say in the way we've implemented this type of feature is where if you go the right route with like our, um, I don't know if you're familiar with our internal LTE modules for, for the VIA where you can have a single oh, radio right. yep. or a dual mm -hmm. radio. If you get that, um, you can either go straight to Verizon or AT&T, get that static address. Or we, uh, we've worked with another company called Max Connect. He's based in Alabama, real nice guy. He resells internet service at a higher quality of tier for higher wow. quality of service. And he gives you static addresses. Once you set that up, it's a once and done setup. 
that's the beauty of a tie line system is we've tried to make it as simple as possible in every use case. Or once you set it up the first time, you don't have to really Done. worry about it after that. Wow. Um, it's just a matter of maybe selecting a specific codec in your report it list saying, hey, I'm not gonna connect to the Merlin, I'm gonna connect to the VIA now. Or we can set that up again, once you log in, boom, it's right there in front of you. That's all you see. Um, so we've really tried to focus on end user talent like your high schoolers or your college students who work with the station. We've tried to really help limit the amount of exposure they need with our product where it can be as simple as possible for them. Mm -hmm. You know, the way I describe it, Matt, is that you can, you can drive a Kia and it will get you where you need to go. It's basic transportation or you can drive a Ferrari. And um, the, the, the thing is that the, the cost of, of the two technologies aren't that diff much different. So why wouldn't you want to have the Ferrari, right? So um, we like to think of that Via as a Ferrari and in, uh, most of our codecs in comparison to Brand X, if you will, um, uh, that, that a lot of people don't know about. And this is kind of a good segue to kind of bring us to an end is that Matt is a really, really good example of a guy who did his homework and didn't just accept kind of what's, uh, what people were telling him about some of the other stuff that's on the market. He researched it and found and talked to people and, and looked at YouTube videos and whatever, wherever it is that you went to research, Matt, but you found out that inside the box, there's a lot more than what you thought. So thank you for using our products. Thanks for your support. Uh, we hope that this pandemic um, leaves quickly so that you guys can get your operation back uh, and your life back to normal because you sounds like you're working your butt off. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, um, thank you. Um, but thank you for, for your support. And it was you know, very nice to meet you. And, and uh, please let us know if there's any way that we can kind of help you to get the most out of your equipment. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like the suggestion with reported or whatever it is, if you have trouble, please call one of us or, you know, we'll, we'll get you fixed up. Perfect. Thank you guys. I appreciate it so much. All right. Hey, take care. Thanks again, Matt, for your time what? and have a great day.